Okay, so this is part two of our discussion of the song that Jim and I have been producing, essentially. What you just heard was the mix with the guitar added to the bass, and then Jim did a, a mix down himself of it, so uh, he can get into that during our discussion. Uh, we're just going to talk about the process, and we're going to do this for each instrument that we add to it. So I think, is the next one the vocals, Jim, or do we have another instrument b before that? We have... Uh... I have drums coming. I won't have the drums isolated until tomorrow. Um, okay. But I have I have a flattened file that he made. I don't like his mix, but we can at least listen to it if you want to, and we can see what the drums are doing. Okay. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, I don't know. What's your reaction to that first? Like, what did you think when you got it, and are you satisfied with what you received? Uh, so, the first thing that we got from him was uh, wasn't on par and I actually had to send it back. I don't know if you remember that or not. I do remember we gave that. Him, I do. We gave him some notes about we want clean chords here and we want power chords here, which I think he gave us. Um, you would say, you had uh, commented no. that you didn't really like the tone. No, th so those weren't clean chords. Those were clean power chords, which made no sense to me. Um, right. Uh, what I wanted was clean chords. Um, right. Like, this is an A major chord. This is an A minor chord. This is a C. This is a G. This is an F. Right. Um, you get that with all of the stuff added together. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you get yeah. chords in there as a result, which is which is good because that's how that's a little bit more sophisticated than just playing a chord. But what I was envisioning was actual chords being played, kind of like you know, like how you have in like say fade the black or something before you come to the heavy section. I was yeah. picturing something a little bit more on the spooky side than fade to black, but still kind of getting that clean. And I wanted, I wanted like, I wanted something like the chords he was playing were the, like all in the bottom three strings. It sounded like, like power chords basically. And I was imagining picking, you know, the top three strings, do you know what I'm saying? And, Understood. and, and having reverb and all that. And one of the things that sort of surprised me was I didn't, I'm not hearing a lot of effects being used in either the bass or the guitar, and maybe that's just a preference thing. Maybe maybe they don't want to they don't want to cloud what's going on, but um, but I was I guess I was imagining more different tone and different effects, and I was also imagining heavy heavy distortion, which we never really seem to get. Yeah, and I'm actually okay with that. I think I'm on the opposite side of the fence with you than this one because one, these guitars were only twenty five bucks. He yep. sent it to us in three tracks, so we got the rhythm the lead, and then that little tinny solo you hear. Yeah. Yep. I can't do it because I don't have the voice for it, but um, I, I liked that. I like the style that he brought to it. And again, we're back to micromanaging, right? Yeah. If we're spending a lot of money, we think we have the right to micromanage. But for 25 bucks, this might be the best $25 guitar. Yeah, no, and it's very good. I don't want to give yeah. it the wrong impression. What he did was very good. I just really felt like for it to be metal, it needed the heavy distortion, and I right, didn't feel right, we right. got that in there. But but again, that might have been... I wasn't as involved in the back and forth, so maybe that was a creative decision on your end rather than on his end. So, um, you know, so it's hard to say. I just feel like we... What I was picturing was really so almost mellow chords followed by waves of heavy power chords right. um and i think that might be difficult to do in a minute too by the way this guy's from belarus just so we're keeping track okay his no, name is arthur that that kind of contrast would have been really condensed in a bit like this for sure i yeah. think it, i think it would have been tricky um but definitely if we do this again i want to get some heavy like i want some power in our uh in our sound um but i think overall the guitar improves the sound of the music. Uh, you know, the, the the bass is... I don't know, I think the guitar playing in this is better than the bass playing. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think we would have gotten this sound out of him without that bass line, though. That's an interesting point. That's an interesting point. Because um, the bass is driving everything. So, yeah. Um, but but I don't know I I feel much, like when I started hearing the guitar then I got a lot more comfortable but then again I'm also biased towards guitar as you sure. as you saw from my my messages about bassists uh, in the <laughs> in the course of this um, so but I don't know what 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 did you glean from the guitar part of the process um. What did I glean? Well, I, first of all, I was having a lot of fun. By this, at this stage of the project, I was already starting to have a lot of fun. 
and just seeing something coming together and I realize, okay, we've got something here. Um, it may not be a, a top 40 hit. It may not be what everybody wants to hear, but I knew that we were onto something with this song already. Uh, I think, I think more money and more time is really uh, essential to doing this. And certainly if we were dealing with people who are once again, native to the language, it becomes easier. Um, people that have more experience know, but to ask more questions, right. He yeah. probably, he, he's, he's, I don't know how many jobs he's done on Fiverr. It doesn't look like he's that done that many, but he knows how to play guitar. He just doesn't know how to ask us the questions that need to be happen because all that comes with experience and we're still learning too. No, so. definitely. And and also I was realizing, you know, like I've, I said, I play guitar, but I sold my guitar last year and I don't have a guitar on hand to express an idea to Jim. Do you know what I mean? So like uh, that really hinders our, like I have, I have a clear, he, I'm hearing something in my head, but it's not easy to just convey exactly what that means. If, you know, if I had a guitar, I could just show him and, and then he'd be like, got it. And he could take that and it would be, it would, for for right. my involvement in the process, it would make things easier. But um, but we're speaking strictly in metaphor, uh, and yeah, so yeah, yeah. It, it becomes harder. Or we're saying, oh, like that song or this song, um, right. or we're using musical language, but we're not being terribly precise about it, and then that can you know right. lead to issues. So and that was certainly the biggest learning process, which was i am never been comfortable being a micromanager when it comes to creative work, mm -hmm. and. With this, I at least need to send a hundred links to songs we like and say, sound like this. Yeah, or, or at least just a section. Just like if there's like a specific yeah. section of a song that has the sound you want, getting them to hear that so that they can emulate it. Um, right. but, uh, but I think that would have defeated the purpose of this too because all of this started based on that video we watched of the guy ordering bass lines on Fiverr. That's right? true. That's what That's true. triggered all this. And all he did was say, give me your best bass line. Yeah. But we yeah. wanted to do something different. We wanted to produce the best metal song we could, I think, right. um, within the confines of the budget. Uh, right. Within the confines of the budget is such an important parameter. Yeah, no, it is. It is. But also, I think there are things we probably could have done now that we've done this that would make it better the next time around, even if we paid the same price. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Uh, and but, for people that are following, we've now spent thirty-five dollars at this point for this song. Yeah, and and uh, and obviously the, the reason for that is because because you ordered multiple guitar tracks. Is that why the guitar was more expensive? No, no, he decided to give it to me in three tracks. He, oh, his price is twenty-five dollars for a minute of music. Oh, okay, so you up so so you you went up a level to get the the guitar basically. His lowest was twenty-five bucks. Okay, okay, that now 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 I'm now I'm getting it. Okay. Um, I mean, I think that's a sound idea. I would rather, if, if we're thinking where should we prioritize our money, I think guitar is one of the places that you would want to do that. You could probably yeah. afford to pay less for a bass line, pay more for the guitar. Well, it's <laughs> true. It's true. Nobody listens, unless it's unless it's like a really good bass-driven prog band, which I, I admit totally exists. Like, you know, if you're listening to a band like Tool, it's all about the bass, right? and the drums but for right. the most part nobody thinks back to some classic metal album and says wow the bass line was so tremendous do you know what i mean there's like a handful like cliff burton do you know what i mean there's like a few people but generally speaking most bassists just kind of fall through the cracks in metal and nobody cares um so you know i i, I think i think the guitar is kind of the predominant in instrument in the genre um and and so yeah, I don't know, I don't know, but you can you can certainly weigh in with a different perspective if you want. No, no, absolutely. I think that the classically metal has been dominated by guitar. There's no argument there. I, uh, modern metal, the drums are becoming a, a little more prominent than they used to be. But I don't um, get. I really don't get that actually, because I don't. I mean, like I I want good drummers, but I'm not there for the drummer by any stretch. Do you right. know what I mean? And I I, I, I know. And I can't imagine other people are, so I don't understand well, why. If there's a bad drummer, I'll notice. Well, no, you'll notice a bad drummer, but it's only going to get you so far having a good drummer, right? Like, again, unless it's a, like a band like Tool, I can kind of see because they're doing interesting rhythms. 
but a lot a lot of these bands are still just kind of doing traditional metal rhythms. Do you know what I mean? Like metal's not it's not like R and B or hip hop where it's like okay I get it like the beat is the point right? Do you know what I mean? It's it's uh, it, it, I don't know. Maybe you're thinking of bands that 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 I'm not envisioning here. So. Um, but but well, I don't yeah, know. I listen to a lot of prog metal, and I I do listen to modern doom metal, right? I don't listen to your era. Of yeah, doom metal, yeah. But the, cla- like the classic of era of doom. No, but even modern doom doesn't tend like the the drums don't seem all that crazy to me. When no, I hear no, them. they don't. But the bass line does. The sometimes, the, but I, I don't know. I feel like modern doom has a little bit more of a Sabbath vibe to it. Like it's kind of gone back to. It's got more of a groove than doom metal used to have. Um, which still feels kind of Sabbath like to me, but but again, I don't, I don't know. It might be long on this tangent, but the fact that there is a thing called groove metal drives me nuts. <laughs> I just don't think the two belong together. Well, that is an interesting point. I mean, it, it, I think a lot of what determines the nature of different subgenres of metal is how much groove is permitted. Do you right. know what I mean? And and Doom is one of those ones where a certain amount of groove has entered in because it harkens back to the early 70s period of, of heavy metal. And so it's sort of it's sort of acceptable to, to bring more of that groove in there. Um, but, it, but you're always in danger of becoming grunge if you have too much groove. And, and it's funny because grunge and metal share so many things in common if an alien came down to earth and you played them Nirvana and then you played them Metallica, they'd probably say those sound pretty close. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But a metalhead and like a, you know, I don't know what you call somebody who listens to alternative, but an alternative person would, would, would fight tooth and nail over the differences. And I think a lot of it has to do with the, the presence of the groove in alternative music. Yeah, I think that's fair. That's a fair assessment. Um, but, I, I think in, in this case, you know, getting back to the guitars, I think that uh, what I would have probably liked to have more control over, and maybe that's just because I play guitar, so I kind of know what I like, is I would have been would have liked to have more control over what chords are being used and what scales are being used, which again were limited by the bass line at that point. So mm-hmm. I realized maybe it wouldn't be a good idea for me to interfere too much there, but certainly. Um, you know, at least stuff like the tone of the guitar, and I want like a, you know, I want like a three finger power chord here or, or whatever. Um, yeah, but, and I think that's something that if when we do this again, or if we do this again, maybe we'll order the guitars first, and we'll have you give a lot more notes on the front end. We'll pay more money for good guitars on the front end. That just makes the most sense to me for the second try. No, I think so. And I also think structurally we really want to sit down and think about what we want. Do you know what I mean? Like, okay, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. how much time we have. How much? How many ideas can we fit into this much time? Right. And where do we need to go from point A to point B? And, like, what's the overall concept we're going for, too? Because I feel like once we got that baseline, we were almost... Whatever concept we had started with kind of went out the window and we suddenly had to we had to start attaching concepts to the baseline right. itself. Um, and we always had the option of throwing that away and starting over, right? It was yeah. only 10 bucks. Yeah, like, no, we did. I just did. don't think that that fits the experiment to throw anything away. No, it did. And, and all I'm saying is um, it's just the fact that we didn't start out with a concrete concept that right. that led us there. And so, we, we, you know, why, why throw it out since that was how we did things? Um, right, right. But... Uh, but I think it would be. I, I will say I have ordered art before before I write, start writing a game, and I will just let the artist go and see what I come back with, and then I build the game around the art. No, that I, I think that can that can definitely work, and I, I do that too. Like I've had I've 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 written material around art that I've received, and it actually does a really great job of inspiring you with content. But here, because we're not really we're not like making a game that's going with the music or doing anything else creative. I feel like we both want to have some amount of creative input in the process. Um, yeah. uh, but again, it, it's, you know, it, I don't know. I, I, I think, uh, I, I, I think, and I think the reason why you want to have creative input is because you want the song to be as good as it can be. And if you just say, just go for it, you're not, that might not be enough direction 
for them. You know what I mean? It might, it, yeah. It, it, like I wouldn't want to be a, a, a guitar player given a really vague project goal. I would want something a little bit specific. So I know. <laughs> right, right. Absolutely. And we don't have a relationship with these people. They don't know us from Adam. They're never going to hear from us again. And they he, He's already gone on with his life, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think uh, I have a friend, uh, Nagy Norbert. He lives in Hungary, and uh, he or he. I said, "Give me seven monsters, just paint monsters, and I will put them into a game." Mm -hmm. And I've known him for a couple of years now, so he knows what I'm looking for, and he knows what is salient, what we I can actually use, right? If he paints a monster that's eating kids. There's no way I can use that in a game. That's horrible. That would be a horrible image. But if he just shows me this guy that's got a human face, but the rest of him's all twisted and mangled, ah, now people can wrap their head around that. I feel like I've and, seen monsters eating kids in RPG books, though, before. Yeah, and I think that's in poor taste. Okay, okay. That probably Personally, wouldn't I, phase me, but I do know that you would actually probably bump into issues in places like Germany where they have laws against that sort of thing. So, right. you, you, you know, it, it, it's one of these things where I just generally avoid having children in the art for that reason. Yeah. But I do have, I do, I did order a piece of art where you had a ghost about to attack a child, for example. Um, but it wasn't yeah. like you saw the child in the ghost yeah. jaws or anything. Yeah, I, and I think that's entirely different because that fits most ghost stories, monster under the bed kind of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, that that's a that's a cultural standard that we have that we can accept. That oh, kids think there's there's a monster in the closet. But I don't think. Getting back to music, I don't think we should have ordered you know symbols and uh, you wanted a tuba at one point, which okay. thankfully they don't they don't have on. No, fiber. no, t tuba was not going to happen because it wasn't present there. I still maintain that. With the right brass instrument, we could get a really cool Wagner-like sound. I think that you are absolutely right. I just think finding somebody that can do it and do it with with the right level of what's the word I'm looking for, where they just hold they just hold back restraint, restraint, restraint. Right? Yeah, the you... right level of restraint, and maybe that's something that's missing in our song. Right, is we don't know where the restraint should be and where it shouldn't when we've already gone down the rabbit hole. Yeah, because I was picturing atmospheric tuba, not marching band tuba. That's right, sort of right. not, not like not like a tuba riff driving the whole song, you know? I knew what you meant. It was just a matter of how are we going to find that. And and obviously, tuba is the most silly sounding named brass instrument too, so that doesn't help. But yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah I don't know. I just, I just like that that idea of getting that soaring brass instrument in there. Um by the way, contrabassoon is the dumbest sounding musical instrument. Contrabassoon? Okay, I can sort of see that. Uh, that's I, a woodwind, I believe. Yeah, but that's not... We wanted brass. That's different. That's yeah, a, yeah, no. I just think if we're really going for silly, you know, a zither. If we'd ask for a zither or... A, well, zither, yeah, I, I, I don't know. A zither, I'm sort of so accustomed to that term that it doesn't even sound funny to me. Um, but I, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure there's an even more funny named instrument out there somewhere. Um, but uh, I mean, banjo is pretty silly, right? Banjo does, doesn't you know doesn't have a lot of it doesn't belong in a doom metal band. I think we're way off uh, our thread. I think we've talked about the guitar enough. Maybe we should get to drums. Yeah, yeah. Let's okay. So we'll wrap it up here, and we will uh, we'll 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 get into the next episode, which will be the drums, and then uh, I guess the vocals after that. Is that and no banjo and no banjo. Sadly, no banjo. All right, so uh, we will talk to you next episode.